Yeah, I study the fungus gnats. Um, Mycetophility is the, the big family, and there's also um, a few other families that were put into that group. Uh, Caroplatidae, and Cretaceous fungus gnats, and um, Didomyidae and Diodosidiidae, some other small families. But for the most part, it's Mycetophility. And these are flies that are also in North America and pretty diverse up there, too. Um, and they are, um, they are reared from larvae for the most part, but um, we only know about 30% of the described species of what they do as larvae. So a lot of their natural history is, is undocumented. So we're still learning a lot about them. And they come in all, they're, they're usually fairly big. They're related to, um, they can be small, but they're related to, they're in the Nematocera group, which are the, the thin-bodied insect, er, flies that are like uh, mosquitoes and midges and that sort of thing. So, um, so they're really quite fragile, but these, they're very, um, they're quite aesthetically pleasing, <laughs> at least to my eye. Yeah. So uh, they're fun to work with, yeah. They're really good at getting caught in the lace traps. And so it makes it nice for several reasons. One is that you can do a, a fairly comprehensive survey um, and you can use those malaise trap samples as points to compare, points of comparison. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice. What I'm doing this week, for the most part, is looking for fungi and, um, and collecting the fungi and, and showing Wendy and others at Imbo how to how to rear these flies and what I do to rear the flies and we can sort of share notes and how they do it and so on so that we can maybe get some rearing records and that's where Imbio comes back into play where okay we have this new species um, it's really in, in really great um, addition to what we know about this group but we can go another step and say it's it's reared from these particular species of fungi and um, and that, that fungal component, I wouldn't know unless it were with, with the, without the cooperation of India. So, um, so we've seen, you've seen, you know, everyone has seen quite amazing uh, fungi here. Yeah. So uh, it's been a, it's been really neat. And and what, what's nice about a project like this that that it, it goes over a long period is, uh, you know, the fun. There are even though it's this cloud forest, there are seasonal patterns, and we see this definitely with the fungi and and the faunal turnover in the malaise traps. So, um, so that's something that I'm just getting a little snapshot this week, but hopefully it'll be enough. This, this sort of um, transfer of what I know and exchange will allow the, the fungi to be watched uh, over the course of the year and track those changes. Um, and it also, there are other flies that come out of these fungi. So, um, so it can, it, it's of use to other scientists that are on this project as well. actually come in a lot of different shapes. Um, there are some that are really small, kind of hunkered down. Um, for the most part, they're sort of brownish, but they can be yellow and kind of striped. And um, yeah, they're actually really diverse. There are about 5,000 species worldwide. So, um, and in this project, we'll see um, maybe 200 or so species um, in about maybe 30 genera. But this is just the very beginning. We really don't know. Yeah. Especially here, but also in North America, there's so many undescribed species of fungus gnats um, that I have a lot of work for anyone who wants to study these um, has a lot of work for just understanding what's out there and documenting the diversity that's there in adults. So the malaise trap catches the adults and, and there are all sorts of new forms that we haven't seen before. And um, so that's that's number one. You get a, you know, you characterize a species, you put a name on it, and um, and then from there you can kind of attach related information.